WBDB presents an audio production of a timeless classic remade from modern times. Hello, my children. My name isn't important to know, but what is important is the tale I will tell you. Conspiracy, plotting, bloody murder, visceral, unbridled mayhem, and politics. What do these things have in common? A normal nine in DC? But I digress. <laughs> Strap yourself in. It's going to be a wild night. I present to you Shakespeare Radio presents William Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. On a rainy March night, the commoners of Rome celebrate their general Julius Caesar and his victory against the sons of his rival Pompey. But all is not well in Rome. However, as Caesar's actions has casted a darker shadow, not only within his circle, but in his city as well. Hence, yeah. home to yeah. idle yeah. creatures, get you home. Yeah. Is this a holiday? Hi, sir. We make holiday to see Caesar and to rejoice in his triumph. Wherefore rejoice? What conquest brings he home? You blocks, you stones, you worse than senseless things. I'll about and drive away the vulgar from the streets. These growing feathers plucked from Caesar's wing will make him fly an ordinary pitch. Who else would soar above the view of men and keep us all in servile fearfulness? Who is in the press that calls on me? I hear a tongue shriller than all the music. Cry, Caesar. Speak Caesar's in turn to hear. Caesar. Caesar. Beware the Ides of March. What man is that? A uh, soothsayer bids you beware the Ides of March. Set him before me. Let me see his face. Fellow, come from the throng. Look upon Caesar. What sayest thou to me now? Speak once again. Beware the Ides of March! He's a dreamer. Let's leave him. Pass. As Caesar tends to victory, Cassius, a senator, takes Brutus aside. Will you go see the order of the fight? Not I. Oh, I pray you, do. I am not gamesome. I do lack some part of that quick spirit that is in Antony. Let me not hinder, Cassius, your desires. I'll leave you. Brutus, I do observe you now of late. I have not from your eyes that gentleness and show of love as I was wont to have. You bear too stubborn and too strange a hand over your friend that loves you. Cassius, be not deceived. If I have veiled my look, I turn the trouble of my countenance merely upon myself. Vexed I am of late with passions of some difference, conceptions only proper to myself, which give some soil, perhaps, to my behaviors. But let not, therefore, my good friends be grieved, among which number Cassius be you one, nor construe any further my neglect than that poor Brutus, with himself at war, forgets the shows of love to other men. Then, Brutus, I have much mistook your passion. By means hereof, this breast of mine hath buried thoughts of great value, worthy cogitations. Tell me, good Brutus, can you see your face? No, Cassius, for the eye sees not itself, but by reflection by some other things. Mm, tis just. And it is very much lamented, Brutus, that you have no such mirrors as will turn your hidden worthiness into your eye, that you might see your shadow. I have heard where many of the best respect in Rome, except a mortal Caesar, speaking of Brutus and groaning underneath this age's yoke, have wished that noble Brutus had his eyes. Into what dangers would you lead me, Cassius? that you would have me seek into myself for that which is not in me. Yeah! Yay! What Yay! means this shouting? I do fear the people choose Caesar for their king. Aye, do you fear it? Unless I think you would not have it so. I would not, Cassius. Yet I love him well. But wherefore do you hold me here so long? What is it that you would impart to me? I cannot tell what you and other men think of this life, but for my single self, I had his life not be 
as live to be in awe of such a thing as I myself. I was born free as Caesar, so were you. We both have fed as well, and we can both endure the winter's cold as well as he. For once, upon a raw and gusty day, the troubled Tiber chafing with her shores, Caesar said to me, Darest thou, Cassius, now leap in with me into this angry flood and swim to yonder point? Upon the word, accoutred as I was, I plunged in and bade him follow. So indeed he did. The torrent roared, and we did buffet it with lusty sinews, throwing it aside. But ere we could arrive at the point proposed, Caesar cried, Help me, Cassius, or I sink. And this man is now become a god. And Cassius is a wretched creature and must bend his body. If Caesar carelessly but gnawed on him, he had a fever when he was in Spain, and when the fit was on him, I did mark how he did shake. Tis true, this god did shake. Gods, it doth amaze me that one of such a feeble temper should so get the start of the majestic world and bear the palm alone. Yeah! Yeah! Another general shout. Yeah! I do believe that Theoe's applauses are for some new honors that are heaped on Caesar. My man, he doth bestride the narrow world like a colossus, and we, petty men, walk under his huge legs and peep about to find ourselves dishonorable graves. Men at some time are masters of their fates. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves, that we are underlings. Brutus and Caesar, what should be in that Caesar? Why should that name be sounded more than yours? Write them together, yours is as fair as a name. Sound them, it doth become the mouth as well. Weigh them, it is as heavy. Conjure with them, Brutus will start a spirit as soon as Caesar. Now, in the names of all the gods at once, upon what meat doth this our Caesar's feed, that he is grown so great? Age, thou art shamed. Rome, thou hast lost the breed of noble bloods. When went there by an age since the great flood, but it was famed with more than with one man? When could they say till now that talked of Rome that her wide walls encompassed but one man? Now is it Rome indeed and room enough when there is in it but only one man? Oh, you and I have heard our father say there was a Brutus once that would have brooked the eternal devil to keep his state in Rome as easily as a king. That you do love me, I am nothing jealous. What you would work me to, I have some aim. How I have thought of this and of these times, I shall recount hereafter. For this present, I would not. So, with love, I might entreat you, be any further moved. What you have said, I will consider. What you have to say, I will with patience hear, and find a time both meet to hear and answer such high things. Till then, my noble friend, chew upon this. Brutus had rather be a villager than re to repute himself a son of Rome under these hard conditions as this time is like to lay upon us. I am glad that my weak words have struck but thus much show of fire from Brutus. The games are done and Caesar is returning. As they pass by, cup cast by the sleeve, and he will, after his sour fashion, tell you what hath proceeded worthy note today. Anthony. Caesar. Let me have men about me that are fat, sleek-headed men, and such a sleep o' nights. Yon Cassius has a lean and hungry look. He thinks too much. Such men are dangerous. Clear him not, Caesar. He's not dangerous. He is a noble Roman and well given. Would he, would he were fatter? But I fear him not. Yet if my name were alive, would fear. I do not know the man I should avoid so soon as that spare Cassius. Such men as he be never at heart's ease, while they behold it greater than themselves, and therefore are they very dangerous. I rather tell thee what is to be feared, than what I fear for always I am Caesar. Come on my right hand, for this ear is deaf. Tell me truly what thou thinkst of him. You pulled me by my cloak. Would you speak with me? Ay, Casca. Tell us what hath chanced today that Caesar looks so sad. Why, there was a crown offered him. And being offered him, when he put it by with the back of his hand thus, 
And then the people fell to shout, Who offered him the crown? Why, Antony? Tell us the manner of it, gentle Casca. I can be as well hanged as tell the manner of it. It was mere foolery. I did not mark it. I saw Mark Antony offer him a crown, yet t'was not a crown, neither t'was one of those uh, cornets. And as I told you, he put it by once, but for all of that, to my thinking, he would fain had had it. Then he offered it to him again. Then he put it away again. But to my thinking, he was very low to lay his hands on it. And then he offered it third time. He put it the third time by, and still as he refused it, the rabble mit hooted and clapped their chap hands and threw up their sweaty nightcaps and uttered such a deal of stinking breath because Caesar refused the crown that it almost choked Caesar. Well, he swooned and fell down at it. For my own part, I durst not laugh for fear of opening my lips and receiving the bad air. But soft, I pray you, what did Caesar swound? He fell down in the marketplace and foamed at the mouth and was speechless. Tis very like he hath the failing sickness. Oh, Caesar hath it not, but you and I, and honest Casca, we have the falling sickness. I know not what you mean by that, but I am sure Caesar fell down. What said he when he came unto himself? Mary, before he fell down, when he perceived the common herd was glad he refused the crown, he plucked his oak with his doublet and offered them his throat. When he came to himself again, he said, if he had done or said anything amiss, he desired their worships to think it was his infirmity. Three or four witches would I still cry, alas, good soul, and forgave him with all their hearts. But there was no heed to be taken of them. If Caesar had stabbed their mothers, they would have done no. And after that, he came the sad away. I? Did Cicero say anything? Nay. And I tell you that I never look ye in the face again. But those that understood him smiled at one another and shook their heads. But for my own part, it was Greek to me. I could tell you more news. Flavius, for pulling scarfs of Caesar's images, is put to silence. Fare you well. There was more foolery yet, if I could remember. Farewell, both. What a blunt fellow is this grown to be. This rudeness is a sauce to his good wit, which gives men stomach to digest his words with better appetite. And so it is. For this time I will leave you. Tomorrow, if you please to speak with me, I will come home to you. Or, if you will, come home to me, and I will wait for you. I will do so. Till then, think of the world. Well, Brutus, thou art noble. Yet I see thy honorable metal may be wrought from that it is disposed. Therefore it is, meet that noble minds keep ever with their likes. For who so firm that cannot be seduced? Caesar doth bear me hard, and he loves Brutus. If I were Brutus now, and he were Cassius, he should not humor me. I will this night in several hands, in at his windows throw, as if they came from several citizens, writings all tending to that great opinion that Rome holds of his name, wherein obscurely Caesar's ambition shall be glanced at. And after this, let Caesar seat him sure, for we will shake him, or worse days endure. very pleasing night to honest men. Are you not moved when all the sway of earth shakes like a thing unfirm? Those that have known the earth so full of faults. For my part, I have walked about the streets, submitting me unto the perilous night. Whoever knew heaven's menace so, but wherefore did you so much tempt the heaven? It is the part of men to fear and tremble when the most mighty God my token sent such dreadful perils to astonish you. You are dull, Casca, and those sparks of light that should be in a Roman, you do want, or else you use not. You look pale, and gaze, and put on fear, and cast yourself in wonder to see the strange impatience of the heavens. Now could I, Casca, name to thee a man most like this dreadful night, thunders, lightning, 
opens great and roars, says doth the lion in the capital. A man no mightier than, myself, than thyself or me, in personal action, yet prodigious grown, and fearful as these strange eruptions are. Tis Caesar that you mean. Is it not Cassius? Let it be who it is. Indeed, they say we senators tomorrow mean to establish Caesar as a king. I know where I will wear this dagger then. Cassius from bondage will deliver Cassius. Therein, ye gods, you make the weak most strong. Therein, ye gods, you tyrants, do defeat. If I know this, know all the world besides. That part of tyranny that I do bear, I can shake of at pleasure. So can I. So every bondman in his own hand bears the power to cancel his captivity. And why should Caesar be a tyrant then, poor man? I know he would not be a fool, but that he sees the Romans are but sheep. Oh, grief, where hast thou led me? I perhaps speak this before a willing bondman. Then I know my answer must be made. But I am armed, and dangers are to me indifferent. Be to Casca. Hold my hand. Be fascist for redress of all these griefs. And I will set this foot of mine as far as who goes furthest. There's a bargain made. Now know you, Casca. I have moved already some certain of the noblest minded Romans to undergo with me an enterprise of honorable, dangerous consequences. Stand close a while, for here comes one in haste. Oh, to Cinna. I do know him by his gate. He is a friend. Cinna, where haste you so? To find out you. Who's that? Metellicember. No, it is Casca, one in corporate to our attempts. Am I not stayed for, Cinna? I am glad on it. What a fearful night is this. There's two or three of us have seen strange sights. Am I not stayed for? Tell me. Yes, you are. Oh, Cassius, if you could, but when the noble Brutus to our party. Oh, be you content. Good sinner, take this paper and throw it in at Brutus's window. All this done, prepare to Pompey's porch, where you shall find us. Is Decius Brutus and Trebonius there? All but Matilla Cinder, and he is gone, to seek you at your house. Well, I will hide, and so bestow these papers as he bade me. Come, Casca, you and I will yet ere day see Brutus at his house. Three parts of him is ours already, and the man entire upon the net counter. Oh, he sits high in all the people's heart, and that which would appear offense in us, his countenance, like richest alchemy, will change to virtue and to worthiness. Funny, isn't it? To do so well around your people and then find yourself at the heart of someone wanting you dead. All because they took the power from you. They took the spotlight. The same spotlight you wanted. Look what snakes in the grass. 